Hey guys, Ivan here and welcome to another video. Today we're gonna be talking about a couple of very interesting things, but we're gonna start with Nick Walker and his current update. So it's been a little bit more than a week after the Mr. Olympia and Nick Walker is kind of known for making a lot of gains in his rebounds. If you guys remember last year after the Mr. Olympia, he had a solid rebound with Matt Jansen. These guys kept working after the Mr. Olympia from what I heard, Matt Jansen likes to keep guys on stuff to utilize the rebound maximally. And I think that's exactly what is the case with Nick Walker right now, because look at him, look at the fullness, look at the size, look at the freak factor. And it was kind of similar situation last year when Nick bursted to the scene. He really made a lot of progress between the USA's where he won his pro card and New York Pro where he of course won, where he looked ridiculous. And then between the New York and the Arnold Classic he also made a lot more progress. So Nick Walker is kind of known as the guy that makes a lot of progress in the rebounds and he made all that progress working with Matt Jansen. After he stopped working with Matt and started working with Dom Super Sliced, he did get bigger for sure, but he kind of lost that fullness, that roundness, that hardness that he always had while he was working with Matt Jensen. I don't know what exactly it was, but he lost it. If you guys follow me for a while, you probably have seen those videos in which I was telling you he lost that hardness, that fullness, that freak factor that he always had while he was working with Matt Jensen. He kind of lost it in the previous offseason with Dom Super Sliced. His weight went up and his measurements must have went up because he did look much bigger but he didn't have that hard, gnarly, grain, nasty look that Nick is kind of known for. Then when he got back with Matt, this year before the Mr. Olympia, he kind of got all that back, but he lost a lot of weight in the process. So I'm guessing he did get a little bit bloated, a little bit fat in the offseason, and that's why he lost that fullness, that crazy full look that he always had. And that does not seem to be the case these days. Because right now, after the Mr. Olympia, a week and a half after the Mr. Olympia, he keeps training, he seems very focused, and what he looks like right now is pretty insane. It's pretty ridiculous. Check it out. I mean, he looks crazy right now. And I'm expecting Nick Walker to make a lot of progress between now and his next show, which is probably going to be Mr. Olympia again. He spoke about it. He said he doesn't really plan on doing the Arnold Classic, which is like the only show that would make sense for him to do, aside from Mr. Olympia and maybe Atleticon, if it finally happens. But I think that that's not gonna happen. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, for now, he's not not doing the Arnold Classic, but he's doing the Mr. Olympia, and there is a long time, and I think him and Matt Johnson are gonna make a lot of progress, and if that actually happens, then can Nick Walker win the Mr. Olympia? Can he beat Derek Lunsford? Can he beat Hari Chupan also? I think he has a higher chance of beating Hari Chupan eventually than Derek if they keep progressing at the same rate because Hari, I believe he achieved his maximum potential and Derek, he has a lot more room to grow, a lot more room to progress, to mature, to get more condition and stuff like that. So if they keep progressing, and I'm sure they will, I'm pretty sure Derek will stay ahead of Nick, but I think Eventually, with time, Nick Walker can surpass Hari Chupan, and in the future, I can see Derek being the Mr. Olympia and Nick Walker fighting him for that first spot. Maybe some year, if Derek doesn't come in on and Nick does, and you know, Derek is off with conditioning, maybe Nick can edge him out with his shape, with his crazy conditioning and overall graininess, gnarliness of the physique and the overall size, which is something that can happen next year in 2023 because the way Nick Walker is looking right now and considering he has Matt Johnson in his corner now and they have an entire year to progress and seeing how focused Nick is already I'm expecting big things from Nick whatever you guys think tell me down below Real quick guys, I'm really excited about this and I wanted to show it to you, this new pre-workout by the old school apps is called the Blast Max Mango Flavor, check out these freaking ingredients, how many of them are in this and how, how good the dosing is and the quality of the ingredients as well, you can see everything right here, this is a really hardcore 
pre-workout, it's not really like Vintage Blast, this is a new level, as you can see it's a new formula, and it's definitely advanced, it's for advanced lifters, I can't wait to try it today, before my leg day, this is gonna be crazy, I'm a big supplement freak, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of supplements, I'm using pretty much everything, and if you guys wanna try this, there is a link down below in the description of this video, just use the code EVEN for 15% discount. If you are looking for a way to support me and this channel, this is the way to do it. Since we spoke about Hadi, I don't know how many of you guys saw this already, but this was insane. This is how Hadi Chopin was welcomed when he got back to Iran. He was literally mobbed by people. I mean, these guys were gonna rip him apart. Check out, check out the chanting. Listen to this. Hadi, 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 Hadi. Insane, right? I mean, this is not the treatment that the American bodybuilders are receiving or really any other parts of the world are not like this. This is only happening in Middle East. Big Ramy received something similar in Egypt and this is what Hadi Japan received. This is crazy. They are lifting him up. They are chanting his name. These guys love bodybuilding and they love their champions. They love when somebody does well from their country. They're really patriotic as you can see. And this is one of the reasons why Mr. Olympia maybe should be held in Middle East at some point. Dennis James made a good argument why it shouldn't and that's because there would be no women in the audience. And I can see that, that's a good argument. And also I know in, in Dubai there are some shows in my federation where I compete at and bodybuilders are not allowed to wear regular posing trunks, they need to wear something more like classic physique trunks because of their, I don't know, religion, culture. So there will be some limitations, but I'm sure it will be done properly, you know. I'm sure they will invest a lot of money and I'm sure there will be a lot of fans watching it. So I think it will be interesting, maybe they should consider it because look at how passionate these fans of bodybuilding are over there this is ridiculous i wish we had this everywhere else in the world but unfortunately it's not like that so maybe these guys deserve to have mr olympia over there not necessarily iran or egypt or united arabian emirates dubai maybe some other country qatar did a great job with the world cup you know in football or soccer i haven't really watched it i heard it was a great success so maybe they will do a great job with olympia as well it's most likely not gonna happen but it's a good idea to think about because these fans are just really really passionate and lastly, in this video, we got some interesting photos of bodybuilders backstage before their individual posing routines. It seems like they had no idea that somebody was taking a photo of them because nobody pulled their stomach in. Take a look at those bubble guts. <laughs> Take a look at Charles Griffin. Take a look at his stomach. I had no idea he had this big of a bubble gut and that he had this separation in the middle, that linea alba. I kind of knew that Nick Walker has a bubble gut, but he is hiding it well on stage. But I didn't know that Ian has one as well. I mean, this guy is kind of known for having a really small waist, but I guess it's only from the sides. From the front, when he's semi relaxed, you know, it looks like a different story. Check out Charles Griffin, like I did not know he had stomach looking like this. Derek Lansford, however, has a really tight midsection. Maybe he's just flexing, maybe he realized somebody was taking a photo, I don't know. But these guys apparently didn't. And this is like, you know, this is a bad thing because, you know, argument would be Arnold didn't have to pull his stomach in when he was, when he was filmed backstage. But the counter argument would be that these guys are doing really well as far as stomach control on stage because lately we really haven't seen a lot of bubble guts on stage, really, like since it became an issue, this thing was kind of fixed, like we don't really see relaxed stomachs on the stage, everybody's paying a lot of attention to that, but this is just showing to you guys that the stomachs are not really gone. Like all of these massive bodybuilders, they all have bloated stomachs, they just learned how to control them better. Especially Charles Griffin, I and mean, look at him right here, look at how bad his stomach is looking, and when he's on stage, he does this insane vacuum, which makes his physique look so much better, and he really doesn't look like he has any kind of stomach issues, so he is doing really well as far as stomach control. You gotta give props to Nick Walker, especially, because it looks like he has a huge bubble gut. 
Not like Ian, not like Hunter, not even like uh, Charles Griffin. Charles has messed up abs and, you know, he's just blocky, but Nick is also blocky and he has a big bubble gut. Like, he reminds me of Ronnie Coleman at his biggest as well. So these big guys, they have big guts. That's just how it is, especially when they really push their genetic limit like Nick Walker did, like he got really, really massive, very, very young, and that's why he obviously has a big midsection. He also has like a really wide waist, uh, big obliques, he just structurally is a little bit blocky, he has big waistline, but also, as you can see, he has a bloated stomach, so I gotta say props to him for controlling his midsection so well when he's on stage that probably most of you guys would never guess that he has a gut like this. James Hollingshead as well, check out this pregnant stomach, like he has a really big gut. I did not know this, I'll be honest, I did not know. And Anton Voyant, he's kind of like a more aesthetic guy, some people are even suggesting that he would do well in classic, so I kind of didn't expect him to have any kind of bubble gut. You know, Chris Bumstead doesn't have bubble gut, Terence Ruffin neither, uh, Ramon Dino, Urs Kalicinski, none of these classic guys have bubble guts, but apparently these bodybuilders really do. Check out James, God, like that's big. That's big, and I, I would expect it from him, because, you know, he's like a big squatter, big deadlifter, and he's like a really massive guy, so it's kind of expected, he's more like a powerlifting bodybuilder, so it's not that surprising, but I gotta say, props to him as well for controlling it so well on stage, on stage, I would never guess that this was actually the case, that this was the truth. Anyways guys, give me your thoughts on this topic or any other topic down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you guys want to support me and my channel, you can subscribe and also you can check out the Old School Labs link down below and buy one of the Old School Labs supplements by using the code EVAN for a 15% discount. Thank you guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.